Hey, this is Summer with Summerly Design Co. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you my method for knitting striped socks. Knitting stripy socks is one of my very favorite things to do. And I've kind of pulled together all kinds of cool tips and tricks that are out there. Um, that I use every single time I knit socks. Um, as I've done it over and over and over again, I've kind of figured out a way that works really well for me. And hopefully it'll work really well for you too. If you are really into using up scraps or you just love the look of stripes, um, this is a really great method for getting smooth stripes where the transition between colors isn't as noticeable and you don't get such a big jog. When you're knitting in the round, you're actually knitting in a spiral not a perfect circle. And so that's what creates a jog in between colors on your stripes. And so the tips I'm gonna show you will help minimize that. And it'll also make it to where you don't have all of those ends to weave in later because we're gonna be knitting our ends in as we go. So let me sweep all these socks out of the way and I'm gonna bring in the sock that I'm working on. Okay, so I have knit the cuff on this sock. Oop, get that out of the way. So I've knit the cuff and I've knit a few rows of my first color and I'm about to show you my first trick and that is to move the beginning of round so that it's in the middle of a needle instead of at the end. As you can see, here's my tail where I cast on. So my beginning of round is at the end right here. This is where I'm gonna start my first stitch on the first needle and I wanna move that to where it's at the middle of a needle. That just creates a smoother transition. Since we're gonna be knitting our ends in as we go, and we're gonna be doing a little trick um, on the first stitch to kind of minimize the jog, it's really helpful if the yarn doesn't have as far to travel. You get a much tighter tension in the middle of the needle than you do when the yarn is traveling from one needle to the next. And this applies if you're knitting magic loop or if you're using double pointed needles. If you're knitting your striped socks on tiny circulars, then obviously you don't need to do this. This is just for those of us who knit our socks on magic loop or on double pointed needles. So I'm gonna show you how I move my beginning of round to the middle of the needle. All right, first I'm just gonna get my yarn in position here. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a stitch marker and I'm gonna slide it down the needle there then what I want to do is knit half the stitches that I have on this first needle. So I'm knitting a 64 stitch sock, which means I have 32 stitches on each needle. So I want to knit half of those 32 stitches on this front needle because I want my beginning of round to be about in the middle of the needle. So I'm going to go ahead and knit 16 stitches. And again, if you're knitting on tiny circulars, this does not apply to you. Um, you don't need to move the beginning of round. But for those of us who use Magic Loop or who use um, double pointed needles, we do need to do this. Seven, eight, and it's raining outside. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's really pretty. I love it when it rains. Not that that's relevant to striped sock knitting, but <laughs> when I'm just sitting here knitting on camera, I feel like I need to say something. All right, where am I at? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, three more to go. 14, 15, 16. All right, I've knit my 16 stitches, half of the stitches that I had on this needle. I'm just gonna pull my needle out and slide all those stitches to the back. So now I've got like a bunch on the back and only 16 on the front. So to even it out, I'm going to turn it over, slide that. And now I just wanna take 16 stitches from back here and slide them around to the front needle. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Just bend the needle, pop those around, and voila. Now, my beginning of round is in the middle of a needle where I want it to be. I have 32 stitches on both needles again. And so we just keep knitting around like so. All right, so that's my first trick, moving that beginning of round so it's in the beginning of a needle. Obviously, whenever you go to knit your heel, you wanna move your beginning of round 
back to the end of a needle. So you'll just move your stitches around again so that your beginning of round is back on the end of a needle to knit your heel. But for the leg, you can knit the whole leg like this with the beginning of your round in the middle of a needle. And you'll just get smoother transitions, especially when it comes to knitting in your ends as you go. Um, it's just really a lot easier to do that when the beginning of round is on the middle of a needle. So for this particular sock, I am doing four row stripes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to my last row of this color and then I'll be back to show you how I knit in my new color so that I don't have to weave in ends when I'm done. All right, I have now knit around to where I have eight stitches left of my current color. I'm on the last row of this um, ochre color, and I've got eight stitches left before I'm ready to start my next round with my new color. Um, as I said before, these are four row stripes. So when I've got eight stitches left on my last row of my current color, that's when I add in my new color and it's gonna be this pink. So the first thing I do is just drape it over the current color. Just kinda of drape it over like that, if I can get it to stay. All right, and then I'm gonna knit a stitch. All right, and now it's locked in there. Now, I'm going to wrap the new color around my pinky and around my forefinger and I'm going to insert my right needle into the next stitch to be knit and I'm just going to flick that pink, that new yarn over the needle and then knit the next stitch and it catches it behind. You don't see it on the front of the fabric. It catches it behind. Now the next stitch I'm going to knit without flicking. Okay, next stitch, we flick again, just flick it over, and then knit that stitch. Your yarn kind of automatically slides under it. And then the next stitch, we just knit. So you're only flicking the yarn over every other stitch. All right, flick it, and knit. Then we knit the next stitch, and then we flick it. All right, and I am now ready to start knitting with the pink. So we're just gonna switch. Now I'm gonna have the pink as my working yarn, and I'm going to be knitting in the end of my old color. Same thing, we're gonna flick the old color and then start knitting the stitch with the new. Next stitch, we just knit Next stitch, we just flick, and I do this for eight stitches as well. So now I'm on stitch three, and then we just knit stitch four, then we flick, and then we knit, and flick, and knit. I think that's eight. Maybe it's just six. Four, nope, that's eight. All right. So now we can go ahead and cut the old yarn. And I leave a little bit of a tail. We're going to be tugging on these later, but for now, I just leave about leave about that much. If I can get it to focus on this. All right. So there you have it. We have knit in all of our ends and we can just keep knitting. And when we're done, we'll come back and deal with these and it's really, really simple. Um, but for now, you can just keep knitting around. So what I'm gonna do is knit one complete round in this pink and then when I get to the second round, I'll show you what I do to minimize having a jog where I changed colors. All right, I have now knit one complete row of my new color, and now I'm ready to show you the trick that I use to minimize the jog that you get when you change colors. So there's two different ways you can do this, and the first way is really simple. After you've knit one complete row, you will slip the first stitch of your second row 
and then just continue knitting around until you finish with this color and ready to do the second one. So every time you change colors, you will slip the first stitch of the second row of that new color, and that will help minimize the job. My favorite way to do it, however, and the way that I think works best, especially for smaller stripes, like two row stripes and three row stripes, I think this is even better, oops, is to not lose your beginning of round marker. All right, so this is my favorite way to do it. You take your right needle and you lift up the right leg of the stitch that is directly below the one you're about to knit and you place it on your left needle. And then you're going to knit your first stitch of your second round together with the right leg of that stitch that was below it. And that's it. And that's my favorite way to do it. And I think that that works better for smaller, like two and three row stripes, especially. But slipping also works well. And you can definitely do that for wider four row and five row stripes um, if you find that a little bit easier. But that's all we do. And then it kind of minimizes that jog. It's not nearly as pronounced um, when you get done with your stripes. So those are my tips and tricks for how I knit stripes. The first thing I do, move my beginning of round to the middle of a needle. So if you're working with magic loop or double pointed needles, that would apply to you. If you're knitting your stripe socks on tiny circulars, obviously you can skip that part since you're knitting in the round. Um, and then the second thing I do is knit my ends in as we go, which I showed you how to do. And the third thing I do is minimize that jog by lifting up the right leg of the stitch directly below the stitch I'm about to knit, my first stitch on my second round of my new color. Now, when you get to the end and you're done knitting your socks, you're probably wondering what you do with all these ends. Where we wove the ends in, or knit them in as we went, we simply give those ends a tug and then trim them down. I don't like to trim mine too short because they'll work their way out. So, I mean, I usually leave, you know, a little less than half an inch after I trim them, but you'll want to give them a nice little tug just to kind of smooth everything out and then just trim all those ends up on the inside. And of course, once you get to your heel, you're gonna to wanna to move your beginning of round back to the end of a needle where it was. So typically like on the last row, before I'm about to start working on my heel, that's when I'll go ahead and move my beginning of round back to the end of a needle, just you know, move the stitches around so that it's at the end of your needle um, to do your heel. So those are my tips and tricks for knitting stripes. I hope you found them helpful. Um, I've got a lot of different striped socks in my life. I love them. Um, one of my newest patterns that has stripes are these zebra gum socks with the polka dots on the toes. And they are part of my Summerland sock set. And I'll put a link to that pattern set um, in the description of this video. I'll also put a link to my free basic sock pattern, which is a great way to practice stripes. Um, it's just a vanilla sock pattern and you can work in stripes and practice all these different stripe techniques. So I'll put a link to that free pattern in the description of the video as well, as well as links to all of my patterns on Ravelry, Etsy, links to my blog and links to my Instagram in case you want to follow me there. I do post a lot of tips and tricks on my Instagram as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.